Two visitors were sitting in front of this painting. It was Saturday the 22nd of April at noon, and they were both just quietly looking at the picture, when suddenly one of them jumped up, broke through the barrier that was around the painting, and apparently threw a piece of rough sandstone at the surface of the picture, which created a large hole. They then grabbed the canvas and pulled it with their hands and caused these tears that you can see across here and two down here. And apparently the length of those tears is something like eight feet in total. It's a painting sort of on canvas and the medium, the paint medium that Dali has used is fundamentally oil um, and resin varnish. And he's painted this in a way where he's applied the paint layers in, in very, very, very thin layers. And as you can see from his technique, he, he doesn't use very obvious or thick layers of paint and brush markings. It's very finely executed, very fine detail. And then this very fine, flat paint layer, which is very, very difficult to then restore. When a painting has been held sort of under tension, it's a piece of canvas that's been stretched on a stretcher under tension for many, many years. When a piece of a damage like this occurs, that tension is suddenly released and the canvas tends to contract. And so it's then very, very difficult to realign those tears so that they actually meet. So the first thing that had to happen, of course, before any treatment or real examination could take place, was the conservator at the time, Harry McLean, was called to come and look at it and look at the extent of the damage. So what he did was try to carefully put the, the canvas back in place and then he used a linen-backed adhesive tape which he attached just to the edges of the tears and attached them to the edge of the frame. Now that tape mustn't touch the surface of the picture, so it was a crisscross of tapes all across to hold the tear sort of in place just as a very temporary first aid measure so that the painting could be moved down to the conservation studio. Having got the painting in the studio and being able to examine it in detail, um, what the conservator had to do was obviously go through several stages. Where the tears were created, all what's called the ground layer and the paint layers was, was lost. So there was actual loss of paint and then along the edges of the tears, all the paint was cracked and flaking. And then the final damage was that for an area quite a few centimetres either side of the actual tear, the paint layer was crazed, it was fractured, and then the varnish layer was also full of these very, very fine fissures. When the canvas was flattened and put into plane, it was found that there was a gap between the edges of these tears, and so it couldn't, they couldn't just be easily rejoined. So the conservator had to go through a process of moistening the area and using pressure and possibly some heat and manipulating the canvas until the tears could gradually be drawn together. Then the major aspect of the treatment that was carried out was what we call lining. And this is a process whereby you attach a new canvas onto the back of the original canvas. But then, of course, you've got the problem of the visual appearance. So the conservator uses a technique of taking a bit of canvas from the extreme edge and as they put in a filling material into the areas of loss, they can apply this canvas to make an impression in the surface so that the overall effect then is hopefully an uninterrupted surface. The next stage is then to reintegrate or retouch all the damaged areas. This was done with um, a medium that we call egg tempera, which is the painting medium that Renaissance artists used. Often people ask, well, if it's an oil painting, why don't you use oil? The reason that we don't use oil is because when you restore a painting, one of the guiding principles is that everything you, should, you do should be as far as possible reversible. And if you use oil paint, it changes over time, the colour changes. So although the retouching might match beautifully when it's first applied, over time they start to look a different colour. 
and that can often be the reason why restorers have to return to paintings that were done in the past to re-restore them because of those colour changes. Over time, the materials and of course the technology, the science around the practice of conservation and restoration changes and it means that now we've got probably a much wider choice of materials and methods. The nature of the canvas, the nature of the paint layer, the extent of that damage is a very, very difficult restoration job to do and obviously one might do it slightly differently now, but it would be a challenge. I think they managed to achieve their treatment in uh, about two or sort of three months. But that was probably working on the painting without any sort of distractions. And that was probably quite a sort of speedy treatment. And one can only admire the fact that conservators in the past, that the museum had conservators that were able to respond to this very, very dramatic and important um, act of vandalism but also be very thankful that Harry McLean and conservators that followed him were able to treat this painting so that we can appreciate it today.